Yes. All right, I'm going to discuss the following geometry problem first. Okay, we are going to, yeah, this is an interesting problem. So this is, a, remember, this is the last problem for, for homework. Okay, and this is a point K, A, that's O, this is a B, and he has another one, then C and the D, right? And the B and the this arrow. So you draw the, the line. And this is a find the area. Find the, the area of the triangle KCD and the given the information CD equals uh, eight. Okay, radius uh, is going to be uh, uh, the radius is going to be six. Okay, and what else? And we also get a KA equals twelve. So uh, think about that. See, I guess you already did the problem, but uh, I gave you uh, time to uh, look at again. Okay. Now, the key point is to find the area, right? How do you know? What the information you needed to know? To find the area, you needed to, the, you needed to know the base. Uh, you needed to know the, the height, right? If you know the base, if you know the height, then uh, then you know the area. The question is, how do you how do you get the uh, how do you get the uh, height? But right. uh, okay, so how do we get a height? CD is parallel to K, uh, KB, right? So the base should be CD. Okay. So the air, and if you know the height, if you draw the height, okay, and then this CD is a B, right? The base, base is going to be eight. So if you know the height, then you can get the area, all right? And the triangle looks like, you know, it's going the K, the point of K is very far away from the circle. That's okay. But the height does not change. If you move the K back forward, you do not change the height. That's a key point. So. If you're able to find the height, you're able to find the area, okay? How do you find the height? The next part is true, right? If I draw the picture, then you say, oh, that's easy, I can find the height. This is the right triangle, and this is radius. It's gonna be six, it's a four, it's an H. Oh, then you say, okay, that's easy, right? Six square minus four square, you know, 36. So the square of a 20, and which is going to be two square five. Then the rest of the part is is a uh, is a uh, is trivial. So base times height. Okay. So that is going to be uh, eight and the two square five. That's eight square five. Okay. Got it. <laughs> yeah. So this is a uh, uh, this is a uh, uh, what do you have here? Okay. Now we are going to uh, let me check what we're going to do. We're going to uh, learn how to count geometric figures, okay? Today. My first problem uh, I want to discuss 
is uh, how do we count the circles? Okay, how many circles we are going to get? Okay, so here's a question. Okay. Okay, we are going, yeah, we have the picture here. Okay, we have, sorry. We have a point, uh, I don't need to draw the coordinate system here. And that, I just mark, in the x, y coordinate system, I have a point, negative one and a positive one, one and the one, three and the one, okay? So the distance is always between them is two, right? Negative one and negative one. One, negative one, and three and the one. Uh, three and the negative one, yes, yeah, three and negative one, okay? So you have a total of six points here in the plane, okay? So that's six points. How many distinct circles of a radius two units are in the coordinate plane pass through exactly two of the labeled points on its graph? How many distinct circles Yeah, it just past two points, okay? Uh, uh, I just give you one example. So one example is, uh, I draw the circle here. Okay, that's one example. Right? Passing through these two points, and the radius is gonna be one, or is gonna be two. Then you will say, okay, if you do this way, then I, I probably can get a four, right? So there are four circles here. But then does not mean get all of them. Okay? So it's not easy to, to do this problem, actually. Let me put six points. So I'm going to get one circle another circle, okay, and also get the circles. Okay. Then there are also many other ways to draw the circles. Okay, with a radius, uh, uh, let's see. We have to get a radius two, right? Okay, the second part, so you step by step, and then draw the circles around the vertex of equal radial triangle with other two vertex at, at the label point. Okay, so the second step, you are going to get it, okay? So around the vertex of an equal red triangle with the other two vertexes at, at the label point, labeled points, on the horizontal line, okay? So let's see. 
we have to divide them into several categories. Okay. As you can see that, That's, that's just too many here. All right, so here we do. Okay, we have this. Okay, then you draw the equal red triangle. Okay, right? Then you draw the circle. You see, it's passing through those two points. It's different from the above picture, right? So this is a one, a negative one, positive one. That's one and the one and here's three and the one. And this is gonna be one negative one, negative one, and the one, the negative one, and the three negative one, okay? So if you do this, how many of them you're gonna get, okay, right? <coughs> so you draw the uh, equal red triangle, equal red triangles, and you get a center. So the, the radius is still two, right? You see, the radius is still two. Okay, then you have how many of them you can get. Okay, you are going to get a total eight. Okay, because for each of them, you get the double, right? You get three, see? You get another one. Yeah, you will get, uh, yeah, you, you, you know, you can, you know, you go as a up as a side, right? Okay. So you get two circles for each pair. Total, you have eight. So the above one, you get four. Okay. Then you have to think about another possible cases. Okay. You have to draw the circles around uh, around the vertex of an equal red triangle with the other two vertex at on the vertical line, on the vertical line, okay? So let's go this one, two, three, one, two, three, okay? So what you do is, and this is a negative one and positive one, negative one, negative one. So those two points has a distance also two. So you draw, draw the equal red triangle, then you get those circles. So how many of them? For each pair of the of the points on the vertical line, you get you get two circles, right? Another circle will be this one. Okay. So that's why total you are going to get how many vert vertical lines here, right? So three. So it'll be six. So total, you get four plus eight plus six. That is going to be, uh, uh -huh. that is going to be uh, uh, 18, okay? So it's not easy to count them. You, know, you have to find all the possible uh, ways to draw. You know, if you draw, yeah, I don't draw all of them. I just draw two. You can see that, right? So those two circles has a radius two, use a equal rate triangle. All right. Another uh, problem, they're all about the contents here, okay? Two 
different circles and uh, and the triangles lying in the same plane. What is the greatest number of points that can uh, belong to at least the two of the three figures? Aha! Uh -huh. What does that mean? So we're talking about uh, the intersection points. Okay, we're talking about the intersection points. Try this. Two different circles and a triangle are lying in the same plane. Okay. What is the greatest number of points that can belong to at least so that means it's the intersection point at least two of the three figures okay All right. Yeah, you think about that. Try to make as many intersection points as possible. Don't miss any. All you have to do is just draw the picture. Okay. A triangle can be any triangle, but uh, let's use a, uh, just assume an equilateral triangle, okay? So I'll make these, you know. An equilateral triangle, okay? And the two circles are different circles and maybe the same size. If we just have a two circle, right? Then at most just two point intersection points. How to put a triangle going through all the circles as many as possible? So this triangle, just think about the one triangle, right? You have to put in this way, then you get one, two, three, four, five, six. So the triangle intersects a circle at the most six points. So I intersect one circle at six points, intersect another circle at six points, so total you'll have 12. But also those two circles intersect, which is that, right? Two. So my answer is six plus six plus two should be equal to 14. Is that possible? Can we make it? I think so. We can make it like this. Yeah, let me use a different color. Okay, this is the ma maximum you can, maximum you can get this, okay? because the triangle intersect, intersect, intersects a circle at most six points, okay? Intersect another circle at most six points. Then the two circles intersect at most two points. Total, maximum 14. Can we reach 14? Okay, yes. 
and the trial go this way. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, I, then I, it's not going to be right, uh, equal right triangle. But anyway, this picture is not working. I have to make sure I have to move these two circles close enough. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I can. Something like that, okay. <laughs> you, you can make it, it's close enough. You do get one triangle intersect each circle at six point. All you have to do is, all you have to do is, first of all, you let two circles coincide with each other, right? Yeah, the idea is that, okay, have an equal triangle and have a circle here, right? Then you shift the circle a little bit, okay? You know, move one copy of the circle uh, to the to the to the right a little bit, okay? Then then that works, okay? So sorry, I, I I just cannot draw it here on the screen. Okay. So you can make it total six. Okay, my next problem is still about the intersection point. I hope you can figure it out. What is the maximum number of the points of intersection when two circles and three lines uh, intersect each other. Okay, three lines, okay? not circles, uh, not a triangle. So, what is the maximum number of the points of intersection right? when two circles and three lines intersect each other. We assume that no figure coincides with another, okay? Do you have answers? Yeah, trying to figure. Oh, you got uh, Brian, you got some. First of all, you have two circles. Let's shift a little bit, okay? Let them get close. Okay, I'm going to draw another circle and move, move it a little bit below that. <laughs> it's very similar to the triangle, but every line should intersect the two of them, right? Okay, so you get the one line, okay? So one line intersect two circles at six or four points. Okay, then another line, then this line. This is much easier to draw, okay? The so total you have, okay? Total for the circles, you know, each line you get uh, two inter uh, four intersection points. So you have a three lines, so you get this. This is an intersection point between a line and a circle, okay? Right? You also get two or uh, three intersection points between lines. Then you also get two intersection points between two circles. Total is 17.
S, right? You have to classify into several categories, you know, like does two, do two circles intersect? Yes, then you put two points, right? And then two lines intersect with each other. Then you put two points, okay? My next question is about triangles. Okay, so how many, this time I have to do the computation, okay, not just join. How many distinct isosceles triangles having sides of inter integral lengths and the parameter 113? So this is also kind of counting, but you have to do the computation now. And uh, and uh, and uh, I saw the triangle. You can uh, denote this side by n and n. Okay. There are many choices, right? For n and n. All right, are you done? All right. Now, everybody knows that, right? m plus 2n should be equal to 113. But not always you can, any number satisfies this condition, you can make a, a isosceles triangle. So for a triangle, if you have, a, if you know the three sides, those three numbers can be the side, side lengths of the triangle if only if they are satisfying the following triangle in coordinates, okay? And uh, B plus C should be, yeah, A plus C should be equal to B. So they must satisfy those three in coordinates. Otherwise, they're not gonna form a triangle. So we have to have N plus N greater than M. N plus M should be greater than n, okay? Yeah, actually the another one is n plus n, it's the same. So this is always okay, don't worry about that. We only have this encoding, 2n greater than m. So now you have, that's 2n, m plus 2n equals 113, 2n should be greater than m, okay? 
So it's actually we are solving an equality and inequality together. All right. Uh, actually, we now we can do that, right? So two n is where then you know, yeah, one one thirteen equals m plus two n. You can use this thing quality can get upper bound and one thirteen over two. Okay, that's going to be uh, fifty six point something. Right, six point five. Okay, so the uh, <coughs> right. So this is an upper bound. Uh, we also can uh, get. Yeah, this is upper bound. Okay. Can M be an arbitrary number? Well, as long as Yeah, 2n is greater than, oh, no, sorry, that's my mistake here. 2n, yeah, greater is greater than m, yeah. 2n should be greater than m. Otherwise, you're not going to make a triangle. Okay, 2n should be greater than m. So m is going to be less than this. Okay. So m could be 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way to 56. Okay. Ah. Uh, Now, but can we get, I think uh, maybe we should try a different integers for n, okay? So is a, otherwise you see, uh, you still have to solve for n, right? 2n equals one, right? So n is gonna be, so not all the choices for m, is going to give a solution for n. Okay, you have to only count those other numbers. Uh, that's a little bit complicated. Okay, so uh, yeah, you can try. You know, then if you do this way, it's okay. So m is going to be one, uh, one, three, because m cannot be even number, right? Five all the way to fifty-five. So question is how many, how many of the, those uh, numbers are, okay? How many of those numbers are, okay? You can, uh, how many of those numbers you, you will get? <coughs> yeah, you have to total, you count that, right? I think it's 28. Yeah, so you have, so that's a little bit complicated if you use this now, okay? You use a, use a in quality for M, the upper bound for M. So uh, how do we count the other numbers? I think the total will be 56 divided by two, or uh, 56 divided by two, which is gonna be 28, okay? 28 other numbers. Other numbers can be also written in the form uh, 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 2k minus 1, right? And the k, you know, k starts from 1, 2, then you get 1, 3, 4, 5, all right? So 2k minus 1 equals 55, and then k should be equal 28 again, okay? So that's another way to do. Now, you can also repress, yeah, uh, you can also repress, yeah, 13, M plus two n, m is less than m is less than uh that's two n. Then you get four n. 
So there's a lower bound for n. So n should be greater than 13 over 4. And that's as going to be, uh, yeah, this, that's, you know, you can do division, right? Quickly, 4. Okay. So it's 28. Okay, uh, let's see, what do we get? 28 yeah, point something, okay? So that means N is gonna be 29, 30, blah, blah, blah. But the N cannot be arbitrary large, okay? There's upper bound for N. Okay, so upper bound for n, you see, still have to do a little bit of work here. The upper bound for n uh, is coming from the equation here. So m is uh, less than 2n, but m is greater than 0. So, yeah, so this is going to be, there is an upper bound for n. That's going to be greater than or equal to m cannot be less than 1. So it's 2n, right? So that's why 2n is less than or equal to this. N is less than or equal to 56. Okay. N is less than 56. So there is a range between N and uh, N can be in any integer scale, right? Doesn't matter. Well, as long as you have an N, you can get M. So N could be 29, 30, all the way to 56. So M is going to be 113 minus 2N. Okay. So total you are going to have total 28. So there are 28, 28 is a triangle there, okay? Yeah, so there are two different ways to, either you get the range for, for N or you can get range for M, okay? Using the triangle in quarters. Right. Uh, my next question is, uh, how many triangles are this time? It's only, only do the counting. How many triangles are in this uh, figure? Okay, it's a hexagon. No, no, it's pedicle. Yeah, one, two, three, four. It's pedicle. So I'm going to draw the diagonals. One, two, three, four, five. <coughs> this is pedagogy, okay? So how many triangles are there and how they come to them? You have to count them according to uh, You have to classify them in some way, so you're not going to miss any of them, okay? A triangle, how, how does a triangle look like? You know, a triangle could be any triangles like this. This is one triangle, just give you an example, all right? So <laughs> you need that to, find the, the way to classify them. And for each category, right? Then you get, you can count those triangles. So you're not gonna miss any of them.
All right, <laughs> I did. Well, <laughs> I think uh, the way you count the triangle is, is to count the tri triangles to consist in one region, two regions, okay? So the number of the triangles can say the one region, can, can, yeah. Cons uh, triangles consist in one region. Because those, I uh, you know, this line divides them into many regions. Brian says you have only eight. My God, uh, are you sure eight? Consist the one regions so already have so many triangles. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Uh, well, sorry, ten. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Right. No, the, the one in the middle is not, okay? Nine, 10, uh, uh, sorry. Yeah, so this is a, uh, so you around that, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So 10, you already have 10 here, <laughs> right? Now you get nine, we need nine. <laughs> the second one is you have to, Consider triangles uh, consisting two regions. Okay. How many? How many? How many of them? All right. So actually, there are still ten. I want to tell you, okay? So how do you get 10? Well, two regions. So you can, uh, you go around, right? You know, this is the one region. Okay? And uh, for that vertex, you get two. So each vertex corresponding to triangles. Each vertex corresponding to triangles. That's the reason you have two times five, total ten. Okay, right. Then you count those consisting of three regions. Okay, and uh, I already show you the three regions. So first of all, you <coughs> yeah three regions, right? Each vertex, how many of them you get? Each vertex, only one region, right? Only one, you know, a triangle consists of three regions, each vertex. But there are there other possible ways to get, right? So around that, you have a five. For each of them, you get a five triangles. Okay, so five times one. And uh, are there other possible uh, triangles uh, with three regions? I think so, okay. So this is another type of region, you know? Right, for each vertex, then you get this, right? No, not this, okay, sorry about that. Yeah, anyway, so uh, this is already counted, okay? So those are counted. We, we, we don't, you know, when you look at that, right? So already count, you know, because each vertex corresponding to, corresponding one triangle, uh, uh, connect that, okay? So let's see what else you can get. Total, you have a 10, okay? So those in the, uh, in the middle, yeah, sorry for that. Those in the middle, you know, this is a, 
I'm going to erase that. Okay, I'm not. Yeah. Okay. So you find out that they are already counted. So one, two, three. Now this is not counted. Right? One, two, three. Okay. So you go around and you get a five already. So plus five times one. So total is 10. Okay. And then the fourth one uh, consists of I cannot get to one consists of uh, four regions, okay? But that sum uh, consists of uh, five regions, okay? Consisting of uh, five regions, okay? And how many of them? How many of them? Five. <laughs> so you're getting change the numbers now, <laughs> All right? So five, and how did I get that? Okay, five regions, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, got it? Uh, okay, so this is a one of them, right? So it consists of five regions, <coughs> and uh, and uh, and uh, each vertex corresponds to one. Then you go around, and you get five, so it's five. Total is going to be ten plus ten plus ten plus five, thirty-five. But right. another thirty-four. I don't know how to get four. So the key idea is to divide them into several categories and focus on each category and count them. Then you add them together. Okay. Yes. All right. Our next problem is stay about uh, rectangles. Okay. So we get. Uh, this is a long one, okay? I'm going to count how many of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, and then I have a, another line here, okay? So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. <laughs> okay, so this is a question. A brick mantle over a fireplace, okay, consists of of rectangles as shores. Okay. What is the total number of rectangles in the pattern? How to determine a rectangle? You need uh, two parallel lines or two parallel horizontal and two parallel vertical lines. Okay.
I uh well any 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 answers here right now? So far not yet. Well, do you guys forget this is a problem? Okay, so uh the best way to do is to uh make sure how many pairs of uh of the horizontal lines because a, a rectangle consists of, of uh, two pairs of horizontal lines and uh, a pair of horizontal lines and another pair of vertical lines then you get a rectangle right <coughs> so to count the number of the number of the pair of uh, horizontal uh, uh, horizontal line the number of pairs of hori horizontal lines okay, is going to be now how many three lines there are three lines so actually three factorial over two factorial times one factorial so actually three you can count them directly right then the number of of vertical lines is going to be how many lines there are actually 11 11 lines and the two factorial and the nine factorial now after this simplify the 55 okay so the answer is three times 55 okay the answer is this is you have how many of them okay so it's going to 165, 165, okay, got it? So, so you probably forgot, yeah, to do this type of problems. And uh, I'm going to ask you to do a similar problem, but another, uh, not exactly the same. So here, those are the uh, squares, okay? That's the squares, okay? So I have uh, uh, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, okay? Four times five, okay? Uh, what is the name of that, right? That's the four times five. How many 20 unit squares there, first of all? Okay, consists of unit squares, okay? So this, uh, this figure consists of, 24 unit squares, okay? So question is, how many square you can find out? It's not necessary unit squares. How many squares are there? Okay. Okay, uh, let's try. You said 40. Everybody got 40. Daniel says 49. Oh, the 40 changed mine, right? <laughs> okay, fine. So, <coughs> so this slide 
difference. You just need to count uh, those squares, unit squares, right? So you need to count step one. You count one by one squares. Then clearly it's going to be 20, okay? Step two, you count a two by two squares. Two by two squares, you will get, you know, this is a, right? It's like it's the horizontal lines, one, two, three, four. That's a four times. It's the same here. One, two, three, right? It's a three. And this is actually the four times five. So you will see the pattern, it just decreased. And three by three, then you'll be three times two. Okay. And then step four, it's four by four. It's a two by one. That's just, you have to stop there because uh because uh, it's it's only you know four by four, that's only one there. You cannot move around. Okay. And the five is there's no five by five square there. So total will be 20 plus 12 plus 6 plus 2. Okay. So that is going to be 40. Okay. That's going to be 40. All right. Uh, what else we're going to do? And we're going to focus on some other type of problems now. Right, so oh, this problem we have to do competition. Let's try this. Okay, so here's a question. Okay, Chris wants to tie a rectangular floor with congruent square tiles. This is a rectangular floor with congruent square tiles. Okay, blue, uh, blue ties will form a border with only one on each row. So it looks like that. Okay. I just use any color, okay? Just use this color, fine. Okay. So the idea is here one, you know, um, yeah, those are the tires, just imagine, okay? Uh, okay. And uh, white tiles will cover the interior. White car, white tiles. This is a blue tiles, okay? So the numbers of blue tiles will equal to the numbers of white tiles, oh my God, okay? So the number of blue tiles will equal to the number of white tiles, okay? Uh, what is the maximal area in square units that can be tiled? Okay. Whoa. Okay, this is actually the number theory problem. Okay. Uh, how do you do this? You don't know the area, right? You don't know even the area. So it's not like a different, it's different problem. In the other problem is that you fix this dimension of the, of the rectangle. And then you want to tie it. You, what, what you do is you end up with, uh, I don't know. Of course, you have to make sure all the integers here. Okay, you're going to this side, you know, each each length, right? The length and width must be integers, then you still can do that. Okay. But the number of the blue tiles you used is not in general is not going to be the number of the white tiles. So if someone told you, hey, I just exactly use the number, you know, the same amount of tiles for blue and the, white 
And then can you figure out the dimension, right? That's the question. <laughs> yeah, right? You bought enough white tires and the uh, same amount of white tires, same amount of blue tires, and, and the guy he high, and if you just put all of them without anything left, no tires broken, okay? That's a good question, right? All right, let's try to, let's try to work it out. All right, we are going to, there are several ways to do. We are going to, you can denote the number of the blue ties and the number of the white ties. Uh, but it's harder to compute it. You don't know the length, right? So I'm going to denote the length and the width, okay? So this side by N as a side by M, okay? The area is going to be, let N two sides of row, that's N and M, right? So the area is going to be, n times m, but you can calculate the area in a different way because you know you can count the number of tiles, right? How do you do that? Uh, I'm going to look at the area covered by blue tiles, the area covered by, by the white tiles, okay? You have to use the conditions, the numbers of uh, uh, blue tiles should be equal to the numbers of white tiles. Let's express, okay? Uh, this is the area, right? Yeah, okay, so total area. Now, the number of blue tiles, okay, is going to be, I think it's 2n, right, plus, to M, but they also double count as four corners, so minus four, okay. Clear. Then the number of white tiles you used, the length here is N minus two, the width, the length is M minus two. So you will get N M minus two N minus two M minus four. Okay, it's actually the same. The total area minus uh, 2n plus 2n minus 4. You see, right? This actually is the numbers of blue ties. This is the total area. It takes a difference. It's the same. What did that here? Okay. So they're equal. Equal means, equal means this must be half of that, right? Otherwise, they're not equal, right? So equal means they're equal. The equal means Nm should be equal to double this, twice of 2n plus 2n minus. <coughs> okay. Yes. So that is a condition, okay? Then you can, you know, these two are equal, right? These two are equal. That's why you have this identity. 
how can we solve this problem? That's pretty standard. If you see a question like that, you're trying to solve, okay? Just solve for n or m, doesn't matter. They're equal position. So n, m minus four, uh, four m, okay? Equals four n minus eight. So I'm going to take, uh, I can take the factor out, right? n minus two. Uh, four and yeah, minus two, okay. And from this identity, it's clear that n is greater than four, okay. Otherwise, <laughs> otherwise it's wrong, right? Right. But n is greater than two definitely because you definitely have a white tiles inside, right? White tiles inside, so n cannot be smaller than two or equal to. Two. Then you conclude that n cannot be smaller than four even from this identity. So M should be greater than four. Then you, you can solve, you can express M in terms of M. All right, so N, M are integers. And, uh, and uh, you have to give a list, right? And you clearly, uh, what is the limit? Actually the limit when N is sufficient large and this limit is going to be four. So the number is decreasing, I think. Yeah. So if you, you see, because this difference there, this is greater than four, okay? But it's getting close, close to four. So suppose for the positive value for n, and you have, uh, yeah, let's, let's write down the numbers, okay? n, okay? So when n equals five, uh, n cannot be, yeah. So here, make an, uh, I make some assumption, right? N is greater than four, so it begin with a five, okay? Then you let N increase. So when N equals five, M is 12, okay? Five, you can do the cake rate. Then when N is six, and this is gonna be nine, you see? That's decreasing, right? M eventually decreases, yeah. Then the seven, uh, and when N equals seven, seven seven so still you get integers seven m is no you don't get seven i don't get integers okay when n is seven m is going to be 20 over three bad okay so eight and the six nine 28 over five ten i get 16 over three eleven I get 36 over seven, 12, I get five. Now I have to stop here. The reason is there's no integer between five and the four because M is greater than four, right? Uh, <coughs> yeah, M is decreasing to four. M is greater than four, okay? There's no way you can, this, is always greater than four. Okay, that's why greater than four because n minus two is greater than n minus four. So the smallest possible value you can get is five. So it's decreasing this side, decreasing okay to five. So you stop there. So to solve this problem, you have a possible solution. So one, two, three, four. Okay, there. For possible <laughs> solutions there. Surprise, right? And the one is, uh, yeah, when the five times 12, six times nine, eight times six, 12 times five. Okay, which one gives the largest? The largest possible value is 60. Okay. So there are two possible ways to, and those two are identical in my opinion. Just the one is horizontal and one is vertical. Okay, okay. Those two are identical. The reason is uh, because this is a then right? And if it turns upside down, you get, you can, you know, this is a five, 12, and the, and the 12 and the five the same, okay? Give you the same uh, picture. Just, you just rotate. 90 degree, okay?
uh, the one, two in the middle, it's possible. There's so four solutions there, okay? Four solutions there. And there's the largest possible area. And the smallest possible area is 48. The largest possible area is 60. You need 60 pieces, 30, 30 each. Okay, uh, 60 pieces, yeah, 60 pieces. And 48, 54, there yeah, are other two uh, possible uh, ways to do, okay? Okay, so this is a very common uh, number theory problems. If you have an in equation, one single equation, two integers, what you should do is express one integer in terms of other integer. Then you, there are only possible ways. Uh, you, there are only possible choices for the n, so that m is still integer. Okay, so you express m in 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 this form in the fraction form. Then you, you also have to look at the lower bound because otherwise you just waste the time. You know, and like here, m is greater than four, and the m the smallest value for m, you know, could be five. Okay. So when you reach to five, you stop there. You don't need to continue to calculate like a 12, when n is 11, to, uh, you know, a 13, 14, you always get a fraction. Then you still hope you can get integer. No way you cannot get it. Because between five and the four, that's no other integers. Okay, there's no other integers. So, uh, okay, I, I'm supposed to give you a couple more problems because I discussed the, homework problems so uh, uh, I didn't finish so when you receive my lecture notes you will see additional couple of additional homework uh, additional problems you can look at okay and can you do that don't need to look at my solutions uh, I'm trying to put it in my notes okay uh, uh, don't forget if you do have some troubles with some homework problems and send it to me by email Okay. Okay, my email is at uh, you know in the home and on top. Okay. It's shenmas class at uh, gmail.com. Okay.